Eddie, so what are you going to do with your? The bet for real. Yeah, the bet is for real, but I would just say that we'll, we'll sort that out. I want to talk about the fight. I don't want that to detract from a great fight, but you got my word on that. Don't worry. We'll, we'll work that out. But. but I think the bet just makes the fight more interesting. I agree. And everyone needs to tune in to see how the bet will be resolved. So tune in on the zone to see, you know, the winner of this fight. There's a lot on the line, but yeah, obviously it's still up to the ladies, and we're still here for an amazing fight. Eddie, will you match Jake's offer that he's going to give the million to I don't Amanda? know about that bit, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll match my word as I always do. But like I said, I, you know, we'll, we'll work that out between us. Do, do you agree with Jake that the bet offer adds something to it, or do you think it's a bit of a side attraction? Uh, you know, I, I saw the reaction from Katie's trainer. I, I like to give those girls the limelight, but at the same time, I truly believe Katie Taylor will win this fight, and I honestly wouldn't wouldn't take any bet if I didn't. But you know, we'll, we'll work that out between us privately. I'm not going to shy away from. I honestly believe she wins the fight, so, but at the same time, I want to give these girls the, the limelight they deserve, and uh, it does add to a bit of fun. It's always nice to have a little bet. When you go back to the girls, what do you think of the energy they brought to the press today? Obviously, Katie, very calm. Amanda seemed a little bit almost impressed by her surroundings. How did you feel they came across today? You know what? I just think they're, they're ready to fight. They've done so much media for this event, more than they've ever done before, and they've, they've both been tremendous, but now it's fight time, and I think they've had enough. You know, they'll, they'll do their duties today but they just want to weigh in and, and get ready for Madison Square Garden at the weekend. Jake, do you feel the same? Yeah, look, uh, same thing. Amanda's just having fun, kind of a little bit, you know, tired of all the media obligations. This is more than they've ever had. Tons of media here, obviously. So, yeah, like Eddie said, they're just ready to fight. Jake, Jake about the first future. week as a promoter, how are you feeling? Uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. You know, you just sit up here in front of the cameras and say stuff, and that's about <laughs> it. It's a pretty easy job, honestly. Oh, what, do you learn from Eddie? What, do you learn from, what have you learned from Eddie, and what have you uh, learned from Jake in terms of promoting? Um, it's all about the platform, really. Jake's, I've got a big platform as a promoter, but Jake's got a much bigger platform, and obviously we want to use that platform to bring in his audience to fights like this. So I think the one thing I've taken from it is it doesn't have to be that difficult in boxing. Like, we don't have to like each other. I, I quite like him, but it doesn't matter. We're both working together for the same mission, which is to provide opportunities for our fighters and make this event as big as possible. And it doesn't have to be like it is in boxing, but there's so much bitterness in boxing. Is. This is this is quite fresh. Eddie, could you tell Jake why Katie's going to win, please? Um, I think you saw it up there. I think Amanda Serrano is going to be overruled with the occasion. I think she's going to be outclassed. I think actually she's going to get stopped in the fight. But that might be a separate bet that comes later. That's a, that's a, that's a big price. By the way, I want a big price on that one. But listen, they're both great fighters. Amanda Serrano punches very hard. She's going to be very dangerous in this fight. But just like Kate, uh, Jake believes his, his fight is going to win, I just believe Katie's too good. Well, Jake, Katie, how, how you Katie hasn't stopped anyone since 2019. So, you know, I don't know what he's smoking. But uh, yeah, Amanda Serrano is clearly the big puncher here, has double the fights of Katie Taylor, and is more in her prime. That's my opinion. We're both entitled to her. That's why we both put a million dollars on the line. Are you concerned about the judging because Katie has won a few close decisions in the past? No, no. I think, you know, the, the, there will be a clear winner in this fight. The ladies got all the motivation that they need, but Serrano. I think she got just a little bit more because she's, maybe she's trying to get revenge after um, Katie Taylor beat her sister. You think that she's trying to get the family revenge? Well, for sure, you know, and you, you know that how, how that plays into my story as well, where, where you know, wanting to take out KSI one day. So, uh, you know, I think uh, there, Amanda has a bigger chip on her shoulder just in general because Katie's gotten these big paydays. She's gotten the headline events, and so Amanda definitely wants to prove herself on Saturday night. Do you think sure. Rob Aram will be watching on Saturday night? Who cares? <laughs> Fuck that guy. Jake, so, Jake, I don't know if, it was if yours uh, or Serrano you. wins, what, uh, what's the next best thing for her after this? You know, I think, I think that's up to her and what she wants to do and with her coach Jordan and most valuable promotions we're just gonna help her do and accomplish whatever's next but I think this you know is leading up to one of the biggest uh, events of the year I mean look at all these cameras they, there's there's this is insane and so uh, bigger paydays is, is, is what's next for Amanda and Katie regardless of the outcome Jake, what's it like being a, uh, not a fighter and being a promoter instead is it, is it it's cool, yeah, no, it's cool. I mean, I guess I grew up doing marketing, grew up promoting myself and promoting my brand, so it kind of just fits in line with all of that. Eddie, so when you said the half the ticket sale, if it was yours or your trainers, um, the zone boxing was tagged. Is that would you be exploring working with Eddie or the zone in the future for when you fight professionally? Yeah, there's conversations happening. You know, we're talking to a, a bunch of different people, but uh, I love the zone. 
love Eddie. So yeah, we're 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 having conversations. And if I lose the bet, I might have to use it in credit. <laughs> <laughs> so Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul on the zone. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. John Fury's accepted the challenge. Say it again. John Fury's accepted the challenge this morning. He said he'll fight you. Bless you. I would rather fight him than Tommy, uh, or both in the same night. You know, Tommy's a one or two round fight for me, and John Fury's a half round fight for me. So we can we can make that happen in three rounds or less, and I go home early night. But there 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 are a bunch of jokers over there. Eddie, you mentioned the ticket sales from the UK and Ireland. Were you surprised that it was going to happen? Yeah, I was because I only found out today. It's like something like forty odd percent traveling from Ireland and in the UK, which is brilliant because yeah. you're gonna have a lot of Puerto Ricans in there as well. You're gonna have a load of Irish. The atmosphere is going to be brilliant. You want that. You want that partisan crowd. You know, you want, you want both sides. And honestly, the atmosphere is going to be incredible. The undercard for this fight is absolutely brilliant. And that is so important for a historic night, especially at the Garden. So by the time that main event comes in, you're going to see an incredible night of boxing already. And I think the main event can only be a thriller. I know you said that the focus is on Saturday, but if you think that how many have traveled, would it make sense to do a rematch in Ireland? Oh, look, rematch at Croke Park in front of 60 or 70,000 would be incredible. But let's get the first one out of the way. I think it can only be a great fight. I think these two need each other, you know, to, to earn this kind of payday. And they appreciate that. The first one's a cracker. Maybe we'll talk and, and do two or three. Eddie, is there a reason you were a little bit hesitant to shake Jake's hand up on stage after the bet was there? Well, he tried to. Yeah, he's, the he's bet. got a lot more money than me. You know, <laughs> um, not really. I was like, I, you know, I, I don't like to take away from the limelight, but at the same time, he sort of tested my ego a little bit. So I was like, I didn't really want to do the bet, but then I was kind of had to. And it started then, off at half a million. You half a million. Well, you're the, no, but you're, the, you're the one that made it a million. Oh, okay, can we go back to half a million? <laughs> but, but like, you know, he was talking about his jewelry, I had a bit of banter, and then it got a bit out of control, but it is what it is now. I can't back down, so. Yeah. Eddie, said it was a 10 grand. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, that was, yeah, that was yeah, disrespectful. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that was, it was a good, though. It was a good. Mine's a little bit more low key than this. But what is this? Paddock, nice. Jake, how are you going to pay him if if uh, uh, if, if his fighter wins half a million in jewelry and half in cash, <laughs> I'll just send a wire. Yeah. <laughs> so, the jewelry, you're holding on to the jewelry? Yeah, why not? You Is know, we'll, we'll figure it out. Jake, what do you think about McGregor's weight game? What's about fighting him? Couldn't care less. <laughs> Couldn't care less about him, man. I don't, I don't know. He's, he's, uh, he's a loser. During the Bisping rumors, there was talk about it actually being staged in Canada. What are your thoughts on maybe having a fight, not in Edmonton, of course, but maybe on like a big stage like a Scotia Bank Arena? Well, first of all, he couldn't prove that he was out of his UFC contract, uh, which means he's not. Uh, and and that's how a lot of these fighters are. They finish their career retired with two or three fights left under their UFC contract, so probably wouldn't even be able to make that fight happen. And uh, he didn't do what he needed to do to prove to make that fight happen. What about in a general scheme, though, fighting in Canada? Is that something that you'd be interested in? Yeah, look, I, I like Canada. Can Canada's cool, you know. <laughs> Canada's a vibe. Jake, is uh, KSI still possible or not? Nah, he's got to go fight somebody. I don't, no, not, not really a thing. Eddie, um, we have Joshua versus Usyk coming up, Canelo versus Vivo, Canelo wins, and we have Canelo versus Triple G. But do you believe that Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano is the biggest fight in the world? In different reasons. You know, some fights generate more money. Uh, some fights can sell more tickets, but this is groundbreaking. Like, we've, I've not seen this kind of attention, this kind of type of media here for this. So, when you talk about how big, what determines how big? And for me, how big is something that creates history and a legacy? And in terms of this fight, I don't think there's a fight that I've done that will be remembered as long as this one. Jake, you mentioned you, you mentioned about the women needing to show up and show support. That was something that's very famously happened at Ronda Rousey fights. Do you think we'll see a lot of women in attendance on Saturday or watching at home? For sure, you know, and I even see it with my fans. I see what they're saying, and I have a lot of female audience, and they're all buzzing about this more so than the men's fights. Um, and they're they're coming to support in person and buying the pay per view. So it's really good to see that. My mom's, you know flown out here and is more excited than even almost my fight. She loves Amanda. Um, so it's really cool to, to see the support that this is getting. And yeah, like I said, I, the, the women need to support each other on this because this is going to be a big step forward for women's sport in general. Hey, Jake, um, I've, I've got a chance to cover a lot of your fights and you're always like really excited, but you seem even more excited about this fight. Um, do you kind of see yourself just saying, you know, forget 
that box and just don't promote her, you know, sometimes so? Uh, no, I still I still have a long way to go, a long road in my own boxing career, a lot to prove. He says I can't become a world champion, and then I'm going to become a world champion. So a couple of fights, you know, seven, eight more fights left. But, yeah, I, I'm more excited for this than my own fights because of how groundbreaking this is, how historic this is. Um, and, and it's my first time as a promoter, so it's a new experience, and it's pretty fun. And your reactions to Jake saying he will become a world champion? Everyone's entitled to have a dream. <laughs> no, seriously. I'm being serious. I think there's absolutely no way he can, he can beat a world champion and become world champion. But I will say, he's improving a lot. He's dedicated to the sport. I don't know how good he is because he hasn't really faced a real fighter yet. It's not his fault. He signed to fight Tommy Fury. Well, Tommy a a five-time world champion in Tyron Woodley is a real fighter. Mate, he's not, he's not a real boxer. He's not, Jake. Well, I Jake, mean, the, the first can't. skill in MMA no, is boxing. Jake, he, Jake, he, he won the UFC Jake, championship Jake, with a right Jake. hand. He's a great UFC But you, you consider Tommy Fury a real boxer? Yes, but I'm not, not in terms of so, ability. But, but listen, but Tyron So what Woodley, defines a real boxer? A real boxer is someone There's that, that is his craft. There's journeyman like Andy no. Bishop who have... Who's been, Andy Bishop? Exactly, but he's a real boxer, right? Yeah, but then, but, because anyone can okay. go and get a professional okay, boxer. Okay, but what I'm saying is Usman does not qualify to give you any right to talk about you fighting for a world title. And nor does Tommy Fury, actually. But, I'll give you the props, I'll give you the respect, you're improving all the time, but the proof will be in the pudding. I don't I don't believe, by the way, I've said that I think Jake Paul is better than some fighters, but I don't believe you would ever get close to being a world-class fighter. I believe that I would be anybody on your roster that's under 10 fights, anyone. We can do that. Any one of, any one of your fighters that has under 10 fights. Canelo? Easy. Okay. Uh, I'll, so at, cru at cruiserweight. At cruiserweight. Got, any any got, weight. Any, no. Any, literally any weight. Okay. So any, any weight. Any weight. Any weight. Under 10 any weight. I will. I, I will about, be I anybody about, on your I've roster. I've got about 400 of them. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Any, Great. Any, Let's any, run it up. Chef. Chef. No. Pro, no chef, problem. Chef give me. Clark, give okay. me your best okay. real boxer. Okay. Chef give, Clark. Give me your so, best okay. real boxer. Chef Clark. One and zero. Right. Boxed in the Olympics. Didn't medal. One and zero. Just had one professional fight. He's a cruiserweight. You can have him, and I'll tell you what, I'll even provide him. Well, actually, let me be careful. <laughs> I don't know. No, but, but <laughs> I'm telling you, I've got, I've, got, I've got five. Let's do it. Yeah, Let's do it. Okay. No problem. Okay. I already said I'm, I'm down. We're betting a million dollars. I'm taking on anyone on your roster with under 10 fights. No okay. problem. And that's right now, too. Just wait to. Any time. Just, just give me a couple of years, bro. Ooh, I'm coming for I your boy you Canelo. Do. Yeah? I'm okay. coming for your boy Canelo. That's on God. I don't think he minds that fight. You know? He didn't say no. No, no. Canelo didn't say no to a fight with him. Well, why would he not? That's, yeah. the biggest, that's one of the biggest fights in boxing that can be made. Payday. Eddie, what was your reaction when Amanda Serrano presented the three minute rounds at Dina's press conference? I thought it was a, a smart move. I feel, I feel like that the fight had been negotiated and I don't think we need to change anything, but I think in the future, when we look at the elite end of women's boxing, I think it's something we have to we have to look at. But when you introduce an, a new concept, which was women's boxing, to the fans, something fast-paced is actually good, and I think it's provided a lot of entertainment. But I think we need to continue to evolve. Eddie, this was announced. I think it was meant to be on the undercard of Dillian White against Alexander yeah. Povetkin in your back garden. Uh, now we have it Madison Square Garden, the main event. You've got a uh, co-main event, worthy of being a main event in itself. Uh, does that just come on? How does that show just how far uh, women's boxing has come along? Yeah, that's a mixture of how far women's boxing have come. That's a mixture of what these girls have given and how their profiles has raised. That's a mixture of Jake and MVP's involvement as well. The way DAZN have been pushing women's boxing, the involvement of the last six years that we've worked towards this kind of moment. And it's very, very proud. You know, it's very proud to see these girls get the chance to shine on this kind of stage. Jake's right, question, now, then. Yeah, absolutely. Eddie, with Clarissa Shields, where would she be? Uh, in the make here with these two fights, I know you mentioned Katie. Yeah, she's a great fighter. She's a great fighter, but so you know, she would drop she's, number two. Or? I don't know. I don't know about that, but she's a great fighter. But you know, if people talk about other fights for those girls. You know, Clarissa's Where would never you rate her? three. Three behind who? Serrano. Yeah. Eddie, how about Tony Bellew for Jake? Oh, <laughs> no, no, that's a massive fight. Massive fight. He's, and he's retired, he's old, you know, he's a former world champion. Who is he? Tony Bellew. Cruiserweight champion. Cruiserweight, sure well, former cruiserweight world champion. He was in Creed. Might, you might know him from there. Is there like, that, that's his claim to fame? No, his claim, his claim to fame was he won the he World Cruiserweight Championship Goodison Park. He was in the back, he was, he was, the the back. He was a, he was he was a janitor character. in the background of Creed. Have you actually never heard of Tony Bellier? Uh, I, I, I think I, I have heard that name, but I, I couldn't put a face to it. Alexander Usyk. Okay, guys, he's adding. That's it. We're up For the that. undisputed Cruiserweight World Championship. <laughs> But, yeah. Lovely, lovely. Jake, Jake, no, I know who Ustik is, of course. Jake, you didn't ask me about that. You asked me about Bellu. Yeah, yeah. Bellu. 
Bellu. Yeah, Bellu. Tony, Tony Bellu. Bellu. He's a big fan of yours. <laughs> This is brilliant. I, I, is it? Eddie! Should we have the Keller fight next week? No, fuck no. Why not? Who the fuck is Why would anyone want to see it? No one wants to see that fight. No offense to Eddie. Oh, no, Dimitri right. Bivol, like who? Fight, fight Benavides. Quit ducking Benavides. Quit ducking Charlo. Canelo's gonna win. Who the fuck is it? Bivol? Like, let's great go. Let's fight. make it. Yeah, well, of course. Champion. Of course. That's your I'm job. Sure you that, no, that's well. your job to promote him. That's your job to promote him. But I'm, I will. I'll, pro I'll probably beat him one day. And you, Just like all these guys. Work. And people think I'm crazy. I am fucking crazy. That's why I'm here. Good. That's why there's 400 cameras on me. Because I'm crazy. I'm entertaining. I believe in myself. And I knock people the fuck out. So guess what? Yeah. I'm Fucking crazy! I'm gonna beat whoever the fuck is in front of me and gets put into the ring. What That's on God. Right. That's Jake's on God. Canelo's ducking Charlo and Benavides. Listen, Canelo's resume is second to none. Second to none. All he ever does is fight champions. He's a pound for pound number one. But not Benavides. He's, yeah, but because ben, ben, who's Benavides? Who's he beat? Canelo's all his last fights have been against champion after champion after cross divisions after divisions. You can't sit here and criticize Canelo Alvarez. He's one of the great. But why is he giving the, the the fans the fights that the fans want to see? Of course he is. He's done that. Not Bivol. This is a great fight. It's a great fight. And I'll even get you a ticket. Ah, Bivol. Come on. Jay, people used to talk about, uh, about Tommy Fury. Can you let people know how much he cost you in December when he pulled out of that fight financially? I don't know. I don't really. I, I didn't keep track of that. You know, like. Who, who knows? Yeah, for sure. I mean, look, people people weren't as excited for the Tyron fight as, as they were for the Tommy fight because they had already gotten that product. So yeah, it was hard to change the whole promotion around last minute uh, to, to Tyron Woodley rematch. Uh, but it is what it is. You roll with the punches uh, in boxing and figure it out. And I got a chance to you know go back at, at someone who went eight rounds with me, and I got the chance to go back in and uh, show that I gotten better in that camp, and I got the knockout. It, you know, it's good. It might be cool competition, but it's like the, you know, there's there's bigger fights, and, and the, the fans want to see different shit. All right, we up this way. Eddie, we're coming this way. Thomas Sun, his name's Can. He's a big fan. What's his name? Can. Can. Yo, what up, Can? Shout out to you. Shout out to your dad. Love you, bro. <laughs> Yeah, there's 